This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Um, I'm going to tell you about dark energy this evening, and for anyone who's my age or older, so 30-ish, <laughs> um, when we were in school, this is not something we learned about in our textbooks, but now the textbooks have to include this, so if this is something you haven't learned about, uh, pay attention, because what this is, this is really fundamental understanding um, in the world of physics that that is new, so there really is groundbreaking fundamental physics that we're learning today. Um, so it's, it's really an exciting time for us. Uh, the discovery of dark energy, so it was made um, um, by two teams, one of them at Berkeley Lab in 1998, so this is 17 years ago. And the discovery was just, it just seemed like a little thing. What it was was it was looking at exploding stars halfway across the universe, so these are supernova explosions um, that were just a little bit too faint. They were just fainter than we thought they should be. And you might want to write that off as a curiosity. On the other hand, these people who then won the Nobel Prize because they were smart enough to figure out that, oh, this is important. When you have these little pieces that don't fit, um, that's your clue. Those are the problems that you really want to be picking away at because that's telling you there's something in the laws of nature as we understand them that are not right or not complete. And so this was one of those. Okay, and then the interpretation of this was that there's actually too much space between us and these distant objects. So in fact, we actually needed to say the only interpretation that worked was to say that there is more universe between us and these distant supernovae. And so this has changed what we view as the geometry of the whole universe. Um, so we, we know that it started in a big bang, very bright explosion, don't look directly at it. <laughs> <laughs> then the universe was accelerating, and in fact this acceleration, or, or it's, it was expanding, and it, this expansion has been accelerating. So that the universe is not only getting larger every year, but it's getting larger by a greater amount every year. And the cause of this is what we term dark energy. Okay. Um, so this effect, it's actually seen in any maps that we make of the universe. Um, so the initial discovery was with these exploding stars halfway across the universe. And since then, we've made many more maps of the distant universe and the nearby universe. And what we do is we make these maps and we try to make them agree with our understanding of physics. Um, and fortunately, there are some features in, uh, this is a, a map of galaxies where each point in here is a different galaxy. And this is actually, I, I have to admit, this is actually, this is an artist um, rendition. This isn't a real map. I'll show you a real map, I'll get there. <laughs> um, but I want to show this because I don't know if your eye can pick out, there are some um, kind of circular-like features in these maps. And the universe really has these. It has these uh, giant sound wave echoes from the early universe that have imprinted um, everywhere in the distribution of galaxies. We can see these. They're large, so they're, okay, the scale here is 450 million light years. So even for an astronomer, that's actually pretty big. Um, and one of the things that we can do, it's a pretty simple geometrical test, is that we, we know these are sound waves imprinted on the universe and they should be spherical. Now, if we didn't have something like dark energy um, accelerating the universe, then these don't look spherical, they actually look squashed. And what we have to do is we have to put in dark energy to make the geometry fit. And once we do that, um, then these maps make sense. But without dark energy, these maps don't make sense at all. Okay, so the largest maps that we've made to date, they're from this telescope in New Mexico. So this is the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Um, so this is a telescope where at Berkeley Lab we rebuilt um, the instruments uh, six years ago to make the largest map of the universe, uh, which we've just finished last year. 
Um, and in fact, all of the data from this telescope, they're publicly released. So if you go to this website here, you can actually find, it's actually every bit of information that we've ever taken with this telescope. Um, so we invite citizen scientists to do whatever you'd like to do with these data. Um, but we've used these data to make the largest scale maps of the universe. And uh, well, skip the intro here, but once we get going here, now this is a real map of the universe. So this, um, this is a fly through three-dimensional space as it really is. So each object you see here is a real galaxy um, positioned where it is in three-dimensional space. And again, you have to do this accounting for dark energy to make it all map out correctly. Um, but I like to show this map so in, in case you're ever abducted by aliens and you have to get back to the Milky Way. <laughs> So I make my kids memorize this. <laughs> my wife's in the audience here somewhere. She'll attest to this. OK. Um, so then when we look at the expansion uh, history of the universe, so the Big Bang, again, it was here 13.7 billion years ago. We actually know that figure quite precisely now. So back when I was a student, that number was, well, it's somewhere between 8 and 20. Um, but now we know it to high precision. Uh, and this shows the measurements that we've made with this map that I just showed you, where we have a measurement of what the universe was doing 10 billion years ago. And at that time, the universe was decelerating. So there was the Big Bang. Um, the universe mm -hmm. exploded, if you will. Uh, gravity is then attracting every atom in the universe to every other atom, so the expansion's slowing down. But then at some point, dark energy kicks in and the universe starts accelerating. And so we have several data points of the universe accelerating. Um, now what's the explanation? So this is the fun part, we don't know. So you can make the list of kind of general explanations of what it could be. So maybe this guy got it wrong. Um, so that's uh, one question you can test is, are the laws of gravity right? And from the data that we have as of today, well, it looks like the laws of gravity are actually OK. Um, so again, this is based on data from these maps. And so the evidence is actually ruling against modifying Einstein's gravity. And so what we're left with is adding some new force um, to the fundamental forces of physics. So what most of us learned in school were the four fundamental forces in nature. And what we think now is this is incomplete, and there's some new force, some fifth force. And then the question is, what is this? What sort of field is causing this? Um, it could be constant in time and space, or it could be what we call a dynamic field, meaning that it changes with time. Um, and this is where we are in our understanding today. OK, so one of the things we're trying to do is get more data to try to narrow down the possibilities of what this is. And so this is a project we're working on right now. This is called the, uh, it's a mouthful, the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument. Uh, so this will be in Arizona. Uh, and it's the, the big telescope dome that you see there where we're building an instrument that's about 20 times more powerful than that Sloan telescope. Um, and I should say this is an engineer's dream, so I don't know, I don't know what engineers everyone else is working with because all, all the best ones, they seem to want to work on this project because we have, look, we have 600 tons of moving weight, 200,000 meters of fiber optics. Uh, we've built, or we're building this um, focal plane for the telescope that has uh, 5,000 little robots crawling around. It's really fun. And what we'll be doing with this is making a, a much larger map than what we've made previously. So the um, map that we have today, we've mapped out sparsely about half a percent of the visible universe. So this is in the uh, however many years, 17 years that I've been doing this. Um, then with this new telescope, we'll be mapping out this makes it look like a little more than it is, but about 5% of the visible universe. Um, so it's a, a much bigger fraction of the universe. Okay, then I want to end with um, 
this map that we'll be making next, um, hopefully to understand the next uh, phase of dark energy, so it, it'll be a map of 30 million galaxies, so it's galaxies and distant quasars. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show this for the, the kids in the audience so you can figure out how old you're going to be in 2061. So this is a map of um, how large um, astronomical maps have been as a function of time. So this was uh, back when I was a student. We had maps of a few thousand galaxies. Now we're up at two and a half million. This project we're building now will get up to 30 million. And it kind of follows this Moore's Law-like projection where if we're smart enough, clever enough, um, we should get to 140 billion galaxies by 2061. So I invite someone in the audience to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm done.